So uh, let's pick up where we left off um, in the last video. So we want to. We said we want to find uh, a procedure to find extrema. of a given function function f well uh, okay uh, yeah so uh, be, be one thing that I need to say is that even though we only need f to be continuous uh, in order to guarantee that there's a maximum and a minimum, uh, the method that we're going to develop uh, relies on on the function being uh, differentiable at most points. Okay, so it's not fails to be differentiable at only finitely many points. So it only works there. I mean, in, in that case. Uh, luckily, though, I mean, we discussed many uh, many kinds of functions that are differentiable in in their domain and the points are not in the domain I mean, so you go back to the these functions remember you have exponentials yeah, this, the exponentials and polynomials are differentiable everywhere uh, but there are some trigonometric functions as well but once once you start taking square roots or, or power functions with negative powers you, you see that there are problems at certain points so whenever the expressions as I said uh, before or the quotients whenever they make sense function is differentiable but you see that wh where they fail to be differentiable uh, can be um, can be uh, expressed as a union of points so it can can be uh, put into a set a finite set of points and outside of those points the function is going to be differentiable so remember the co the goal that we had when we when we began our our, our discussion of uh, extreme values was that we wanted, wanted to develop a procedure that will allow us to reduce the problem of finding extrema to testing finitely many points. So if we say, okay, the, the function is differentiable, so the place where it is differentiable, we develop a method uh, to find finitely many points, and then the points where it's not differentiable are also other, I mean, there are some other finitely many points, then together uh, they're going to be finitely many points. So these are going to be the, the candidates for our uh, extreme values. Okay, so this is the the, the principle. Okay, so what is so? Let's try now to uh, proceed and give the key idea. In the case f is differentiable everywhere, uh, if it's not, uh, as I said, we will just include the the points where it's not differentiable as our candidates for a for a, for a extreme value. So if we have a function uh, like this, defined between a and b, I guess I'm sorry. Okay, so what is so maybe you know I, I'm not satisfied with this. Really. I make, should make it more clear like that. Okay, that's much better. So this is the function f of x. So let let me see um, how can we. I mean, let's. I hope that is clear from the drawing. I'm not sure that I accomplished that. Okay, but what I wanted to do. And here was to let me just see help you realize that here the maximum value is actually attained at a so this is the point this is the maximum value and the minimum value here is not that b b has a higher value than than f at this point And as you can see here from this uh, blue line, what happens when f attains the minimum inside, so in between a and b? Then the slope is zero. 
So this point, let's go, call this point C. So at C, C, F prime is zero because C is in between A and B. It's not A nor B. It's exactly in between A and B. So where F is defined. Uh, then what are the other candidates that we have here? So if so in inside the interval, if you have a maximum or minimum, then its derivative has to be zero. And yeah, so say so in, in either the point is in between A and B, or is either A or B. So then uh, and at x equals in at A f of A or f attains its maximum, f of a is a, f of a is the maximum value. And so, and f of c here is a minimum value. So from the drawing here, we can see that, that yeah, there are two kinds of points. So extreme points, so A and B, so the endpoints of the interval, and all the other points in between. If F attains a maximum or a minimum uh, at a point in between A and B, then the derivative must must be zero. And in, and well, I mean, there's nothing else to be said. Then I mean, if it, it either attains the maximum at a point inside the interval or at the endpoints. And that's the case here. So I, I was trying to draw um, something here so that this hump here will take on a smaller value than f of a. I don't know if that's clear from the drawing or not. But the important point is that the maximum here is attained at one of the endpoints and the minimum is attained inside. So if it's attained inside, remember, the derivative is zero. I mean, but that's assuming the function is differentiable. If it's not differentiable, then this thing doesn't make sense. So this assumes here. So this works. So this assumes if it's differentiable. So let's look at another example. In fact, this is a example from the previous video. This is something we It was the last example from the previous video. It's just a function absolute value of x. f of x is absolute value of x. And so what is the maximum? We already recorded that the maximum value was uh, f of 1, which is f of minus 1. It's the maximum value. value and 1 and minus 1 and 1 are endpoints. Now the minimum is attained at 0. So f of 0 is 0 is the absolute minimum value. So when we don't say anything like max or min, we definitely mean the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values. If we want to talk about, say, a, a slightly different notion, a weaker notion, such as um, local min or local max, then we specify that it's a local max or a local min. This is something we haven't introduced yet, or if it's coming. Uh, but whenever we just say max or min, we mean the absolute ma max and the absolute min. min. So it's the m minimum value here. But we see we cannot say here that we we can't say that uh, if prime zero is zero 
because f prime it's not even defines it does not exist the limit doesn't exist doesn't exist at x equals zero so that's the only correction that we need to make to the method so okay but then 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 already tells us something either the point the f prime doesn't exist at the point or it's an endpoint like here at one minus one or in the previous example or it's a point or, or for which the derivative at which the derivative of f vanishes so those are all our candidates for local extrema and i mean in critical point so we have critical point uh so those are those are the uh, the candidates that we're going to have for uh, extrema. So let's define define what it is a critical point a number C in the domain or in the domain because I mean, we're just gonna, I mean, we're gonna forget that f exists outside of the domain, domain of f is called a critical point if either f prime at c is equal to zero or f prime at c doesn't exist So the, there are two possibilities. So there, are, uh, f prime is equal to zero at the point, or f prime doesn't exist. And now the key thing local extrema and critical points so this is a key key connection between these two things so we're going to define what is a local minimum and a local maximum so fc is a local minimum respectively Uh, local if f of c is the minimum respectively maximum and some open interval containing C. So let's see what that means with the drawing and let me point out that if c belongs to an open interval then c is not a, a an endpoint okay so we're talking about a, um, an open interval so it's between c is strictly between two numbers so it's key to to uh, define the notion of local min so uh, 
we've got an example is going to be similar to something we did a little while ago it's a very neat lecture So uh, here, this point, so this is the point C. This is a local max. Why? Because let's look. I mean, we can find a small interval. We can find a small where f uh, f of c is a uh, maximum value so if we so zoom in what we see is something like this right so and this is f of c so if we forget about what happens outside this interval, then f of c is definitely an absolute maximum for f inside that small interval. Okay, so then, then but we see here in the graph that f of c is not the absolute maximum because uh, there's another point d. Here, uh, f, so f of d is the absolute maximum that doesn't prevent uh, the function from having other local min or max this is I mean similarly this point here corresponds to a, a local min So f of e is a local min, and this point here, h is a local is the absolute uh, min. f of h is the absolute min. But f of e is uh, is a local min. So we can again we can restrict f to a small neighborhood of e, in which the function is gonna have f of e as a global min. Um, moving on, so or uh, let's say for a minute on this example. I mean, this kind of examples here. So, uh, you may think that any point. I mean, I don't know if you may think that. I mean, but you may ask yourself about this. So. What is so special about these points here, like C, H, D, and E? C and E are uh, uh, local max and local min, respectively. Well, how do we know that there aren't other points? I mean, I just look at the graph, and maybe any point can be a local ma uh, min or a local max, because it's just a matter of restricting the function to a very small interval. Well, you can see here that no point inside this interval a b is going to be a local max or local min so let's pick any point so let's pick the point x naught no matter how small you pick an interval around x naught you're going to find that f takes on smaller values than f of x naught and the 
bigger values as well. So f of d, this is f of, say, is it f of x naught, and this is f of c. So f of x naught is strictly smaller than f of c, strictly smaller than f of d. So no matter how small your interval, f of x naught is never going to be uh, neither a local min or a local max. And if you see what happens here, uh, the thing is that near x naught, uh, the function is decreasing. So on one side, the values of f are going to be bigger than f of x naught, and the other side, they're going to be smaller. And that's because the, the derivative is... What is the, the sign? I mean, a question for you. What can you say probably about the derivative of here, uh, of uh, f, in any interval containing x naught? The slope is uh, negative because it's going down. So that's the answer. f prime is negative. So you're going to find the same thing happens when uh, f prime is positive near the point x naught just that you're going to move from the smaller values to higher values uh, once you cross a point x naught. So the only way for you to have a local min or local max is if the derivative is zero, if the function is differentiable at the point. Okay, so what is the principle here? The main thing. So what is the main main observation main observation if f is defined in an interval i from, from, uh, in, yeah, in taking values in r and In any local extrema extrema um, any point that is not an endpoint at any point C strictly in between A comma B Uh, so a comma b can be is what defines a, the interval i. So the interval i either contains a point a and b or one of them, or it doesn't matter. But it always contains an interval of the form a comma b open. So it's any point in between the endpoints. Then uh, it corresponds to a critical point also since we're trying to find the absolute maximum absolute also the uh, absolute maximum absolute minimum of a function also extreme values If in the interior of the interval, so that means in again in so inside a comma b open, they are. local min or max and thus correspond to critical points okay so this is the 
the most important thing you should remember. So for all applications that we're going to see so far, I mean, you're going to see about from, from now on, um, this is the key point. Um, when maximizing or minimizing a function f inside an interval i the candidates are the endpoints or critical points okay so from now on when we're asked to find uh, the optimal shape the maximizer the 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 configuration that minimizes the cost or something like that we always have to look at what happens at the endpoints of the interval and then what happens uh, at the critical points. So we need to find critical points. So those are points where the derivative is not defined or where it's equal to zero. So we'll see that in examples in the next video.